One very common problem that you have as applications grow is that you end up with lots of entities and lots of objects used by those entities as well. And those entities are also related between themselves. So think about an e-commerce. You're gonna have maybe an order entity, uh, an order model, and then you're gonna have an order line model, uh, maybe a discounted item model that goes with an order. You're going to have an order status, enum, uh, so on and so forth. And that's a very common problem. So today I want to talk about a pattern called the aggregate pattern, uh, which comes from domain-driven design, but I think it's applicable to pretty much any software. It tries to solve a few things. It tries to create a boundary. It specifies that that the cluster of objects you want to treat as a unit. So uh, order status and order line. Although those are three separate objects, they kind of represent, not kind of, they really represent the same thing. You do not access an order line by itself and you do not access an order status by itself. You access an order and from the order you check the status and you also might check the order lines, but you don't just fetch an order line from the database and do some operations with it. You fetch the order. That's the root of things. And it also solves some consistency issues. And, and really, it just makes it easier to organize your software. So let's jump into XCollyDraw just so I can kind of show the problem. And then we're going to take a look at some Laravel code, how to handle that within Active Record specifically. There are some differences in how you can handle that. If you're working with, let's say, a data mapper, for example, or if you just have a mapping layer between your database and your entities, it becomes much easier to deal with aggregates because you can map those objects beforehand. They do not necessarily map one to one to database tables. But when we talk about active record, you have one problem, which is each model represents a table within the database and each property represents a column by default. An order line is going to represent a record within the order lines table, even though it is a part of the order model. First, let's talk about aggregates and then I'm going to show you a few ways you can try to apply that within active record. So let's go into, let's jump into Excaldraw. Okay, so here's an example of an order entity, an order line entity, and then an order status object. Um, as you can see, they're separate things, but really they represent the same thing. They represent an order, they are part of an order. So if you think about it, and if you try to forget databases and tables in active record for a little while. If you were building this just using a programming language, let's say PHP or Ruby, how would you build this? Well, you probably would have this order object and then you have order line as a property, well, an array of order lines really. So you would have several of them as a property within class, right? So the order object would hold several order lines and it would also hold an order status. Therefore, maybe you would do something like order lines and then you would be able to do something with it or, you know, go through each one. Let's talk about databases. So if you were using a mapping layer, let's say that you have an order repository, if you had that, you could map that into something meaningful to the database. So you could pass that order object that holds those order lines. And then only before actually saving at the end of the process, you only want to push this into the database, everything's done. After all your checks are done, after everything's good to go, you want to insert this into the database. Before that, you want to keep it in memory. If you have this repository, you can map that into something that goes into the database. The same thing happens when you're fetching data. Well, you have two tables here, you have order and order line. So, when you're fetching an order from the database, you can also fetch order lines with it through a join. On your repo uh, or some other layer, you can map that into a meaningful order object. When we talk about active record, that becomes a little bit more complex because each object represents a table itself. So if you want to save those order lines, you, you have to save them into the database uh, one by one. You have to call save within this object. And you would have to first, and then you would be able to save each one of those order lines. So what you can do is to put this all inside a transaction. But the problem is you are still interacting with these order lines by itself. And this isn't necessarily a problem, but as an application grows, you want to get rid of those fuzzy lines. You want to make 
uh, interaction with your car objects consistent and you want to have an object that's responsible for all of its descendants, if you will. If you think of it as a tree, you want order to be the root of the tree, these would be nodes, right? How do we solve this? How do we implement this pattern within Active Record? One of the things that we want to do with aggregates is to create boundaries. We have an order, we have order status, and we have this order lines. And I'm going to get rid of those two. They were here just to exemplify that they were an array. If you have all of these objects and they represent the same concept, they should, they, well, not should, but they could be treated as a single unit. That's what we're talking about. So we could have an order aggregate. We're going to call this the order aggregate. And within this order aggregate, you also have what we call, this is the entity you're going to interact with when you want to do something with this aggregate. Everything else is encapsulated and only accessible through order. A good way to think of this is everything that's not the aggregate root is private. So this is private and this is also private. The, you can interact with this but you cannot interact with, at least not directly. You want to force your calls to go through this, and then this order aggregate root, this order model entity, whatever you want to call it, is going to interact with its own components, which in this case is order status and order line, to do whatever you need to do. And you can handle invariants and what else, um, this object. So let's see how we can implement this within an eloquent context, for example, using Laravel. So I have a very simple example. We have, this is simple app I'm writing just to use in videos. Uh, you have events. Let's take a look at the models. You have events, you have tickets, you have payments, you have orders, and you have order tickets. And this should probably be named order lines, but you can think of an order ticket as an order line. If you're purchasing two tickets, you're going to have an order with two order tickets. And then we have a very simple action uh, that is simplified for this video. It just adds the tickets to an order and then places it. So let's take a look at this test first. We are submitting a payment for, there's no actual payment going on, but we want to purchase two tickets. We have the ticket ID. We want to make sure that the order status was completed and we have the proper total paid. So let's run this first, it's passing. If we go into purchase tickets, what you might see happening in a lot of code bases is something like this. You would um, create a new order. So you would do something like new order, and then you'd say, thank you, compiler. You pass the user ID and the total, uh, and then you would save it. And then you go through each one of the tickets, something like this, and then you would also create those tickets, and then you would be done. And th that's good, that works. But as your application grows, it might become hard to understand all of this as you would also have more entities involved and whatnot. And you would also pass the status here. I forgot about that. So it's order status completed or something like that. As your application grows, it will become hard to maintain this. I would be pro I would prepare for this. Here's what you can do. This works. You have one big problem here, which is this could go through and this could fail. And now you have inconsistent state because you have an order without tickets, the easy solution would be to put this within a transaction. So you could do that. You could add a transaction here. You would pass a closure. You would put all of this a transaction. Now, the problem here, in my opinion, is you are interacting with those two units of the order IT of the order unit, um, which should be encapsulated with an order. And the reason it should, when I say should, this is just my opinion, of course, is because as your application grows, you're going to have more components interacting with this. And you want to have a single point of communication. You want to have an actor within your system that's responsible for dealing uh, with everything that's related to, to its idea, in this case, an order. So we want this order object to really encapsulate all behavior related to orders because order status and order tickets are related to orders. To organize that, we don't need to know how that works. It will make it easier for us to refactor our application in the long run, uh, and it will also be easier to interact with these components. So here's what you can do instead. Let me get rid of this and uncomment this. This is a simplified example. So here's what I'm doing. I'm calling this start method. 
And if we look at this start method, you can see it just returns an instance of an order with a pending status. After that, we're calling map tickets, which just returns a collection of tickets, uh, so ticket objects. And then we're calling add. You can see that we're also not passing the instance of order ticket. We're passing the ticket itself. And then order is responsible to turn this ticket into something meaningful, which is an order ticket. So we pass the ticket ID and the total paid. And we call the place method. And you can see that the place method calculates the total paid. It calculates, um, I'm, I'm sorry, it sets the status to complete it. And then within a transaction, it saves the it saves all of the tickets. And you might find this weird. What, why am I doing this? Why am I pushing the tickets into an in-memory collection? And only afterwards am I saving this? And we're going to explain this in one second. So quite a few things for us to see here. The first one is you might notice that I'm not using save method here. And I could use that. Why am I not using that? Well, here's the problem. Active record relationships, not all of them, but some of them require the object to be saved on the fly. And for us to save an order ticket, we need to have the order model persisted already. And the reason we need this to happen is because we have a foreign key within the order ticket that references the order model. So if this order model does not have an ID yet, we cannot save a child an order ticket because we won't have an ID to reference. So if I were to go and do something like um, ticket save, it wouldn't work because I haven't persisted anything yet. You might think, okay, an easy solution is to just save the order first and then solve all of the related objects, which is what we're doing beforehand. The problem with that is it becomes harder and harder to deal with invariants and business rules and you have lots of those in most applications, e-commerce would have tons of those. Uh, whereas if we encapsulate that within our main object, it becomes much, much easier. So what I like to do with Eloquent is try and call methods within my models that do things in memory. And then I call a method that finalizes an operation. That's, that's how I would put it. In this case, it's place. So what place does is it sets the status, it sets the total, the total paid, which is calculated based on the tickets this order has, uh, saves everything within the transaction. So this works as a single unit of work. We won't have inconsistent state. And we also will not have inconsistent state between the order total and the tickets. One thing you could think about here is if you have a problem with how you're calculating or how you're passing the total to the order and you're creating the order first, you could have inconsistencies between the order total and how much the, the tickets sum up to. What could we do here? Some benefits. If we have this place method, one of the most obvious things we can do is to check if this order hasn't been paid yet. We could check the status and we could say that if the status is completed, well, we don't want to place a completed order. So we could throw an exception, maybe an order already completed exception. And this class doesn't exist. So this is obviously going to fail and I'm going to comment this. Another thing is, and I have a task added for this actually. What if we pass an empty array? What if the order doesn't have any tickets? And you might think, okay, this is something you should handle within your uh, HTTP layer. And we do. If we look at the LiveWire component, I comment to this. Uh, and if you look with an order intent, which is um, an object we're passing around, there's also a check that you need to have tickets. So I also commented this out, but within your domain, you want to ensure that is an invariant. If we run this, we should get an exception. We're not getting that. What we can do is since we're using the place method, we can check that here. So if we don't have tickets, we can throw an exception. Let's try that out. And now that is passing. If the order has been completed already, we don't want to place an order that's been completed. It's already been paid for. It's already. Paid. If you want to make changes, there are strategies you can use, but you know, usually you would cancel an order and create a new one or something like that. We now have a place that's, well, that's funny. It's actually called place, but I mean, you have a method that you can use to verify that happened correctly, that all of your models have a consistent state, that all of your business rules are being followed and only Afterwards, you're going to save that into the database. 
You might also want to dispatch events here when adding a ticket or when saving an order, all sorts of things. And now if we look at purchase ticket, we have a very clean API. We are starting an order, we're adding tickets to it, and then we are placing that order. I like to call those finalizer methods because they finalize an operation within the database. They usually call save. And ideally, it would be really cool if Eloquent could support, you know, storing things in memory like we're doing here and then calling save and having save persist everything all at once as one single unit of work, excuse me. And uh, I actually created a package. It's called Laravel persist. And what it does is basically this. It offers a persist method, you use a persist trait, and then you can do things within your model in memory. So you can push for lines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can attach a payment so you can set up all of your relationships and you have three here. You have order lines for the order, you have the payment and you have the customer within the payment. And then you call persist and persist will automatically save everything within a transaction. So you have consistent state, but that's not the point of this video. Now that we have this going, we already have um, a clean API and we're checking for our business rules and whatnot. The reason, one of the reasons I love modularization and I love grouping things by context rather than type is we now have an order status enum. We also have two models, order and order ticket. And we also have an order missing tickets exception. And we're treating this as a single unit. So what you can do is if you want, of course, and this is not exactly how I would put it, but this is just an example. All of those, the same folder. Let's do this. Let me move this here. Wait for PHP Storm to catch up with what just happened. If I go to order, everything related to the concept of an order. I have the root, which would be a, a node or something like that. I have the status in them, and I even have an exception that's thrown if a business rule is not met. So that's pretty cool. Now, another thing that I mentioned is within an aggregate, you usually definitely want to access the, the main object, the aggregate root, the main entity, in this case, order. And then from the order, you want to access whatever else you need, maybe the tickets. You don't want to access the tickets directly. I cannot think of a use case where you would have to uh, access this directly. Um, there's certainly is some use case where you would have to do this, but usually you want to look at the order as a whole, not as a ticket specifically. And sometimes you want to look at the tickets, but still those are a property of the order, if you will. What you can do is you can call, not call, but you can set up the with property within Eloquent and we can say with tickets. So every time that we fetch an order, we're also fetching its tickets with it and then we can have access to that pretty easily. So this is just a quick example. Those are not meant to be hard rules. Remember, patterns exist to try and find a common solution to a common problem, or rather a general solution to a common problem. If you feel they're making things more complicated, then they're not suited for your use case. I think that just thinking about the aggregates within your system is really, really helpful because as a system grows, you do end up with lots of entities, lots of lots of uh, domain objects in general. So, you know, value objects, enums related to properties within your models, uh, relationships, exceptions, services, all of that. So trying to think about those things uh, as clusters of objects, as units that encapsulate lots of different objects instead of thinking about different objects. So instead of thinking about order status, order line, the exceptions, order. I just think about order and order is responsible for talking to its members, to its internal members and figuring things out. It usually leads to cleaner APIs and to more maintainable code. Um, so let me know what you think about this video, if it makes sense, if it doesn't, uh, let me know your comments and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.